uses or intimidates the other. Does that sound familiar? Am I making that up? Remember these terms. Psychological warfare. You can look it up on the dictionary. My brother Ty here put one of my lectures that I did right here on the local TV station. I would title it Psychological Warfare. It's the use of propaganda or other psychological means to influence or confuse the thinking, under, undermine the morale of the enemy or opponent. We're going through psychological warfare. A lot of our youth are totally disconnected. Y'all should be really feeling something, because this could be you up there. All of us are at risk. You see, they was dusting off the sisters. And the reason why this is happening to us is the second definition. And like I said on Friday, don't try to look this definition up, because it's my definition. But I believe that it's relevant to what's going on. Global complicity. This term refers to Europeans have convinced the world via other races through imagery, propaganda, media, psychology, and false information that is good business to mistreat, miseducate, exploit, use, abuse, and even murder people of African descent. Complicit means to be involved in. They have convinced the world that it's nothing wrong with what you're going on, with what's going on here. When you go in your neighborhoods and you get the alcohol, the pork, who's doing that? These little corner stores you go to. Who only own the Arabs? Mm -hmm. And in the area where I'm from, they even have plexiglass in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Baltimore. They don't even want you to touch you. In the movie, uh, Menace to Society, how that movie start out? Mm -hmm. Nobody likes black people, right. including ourselves. Nobody. Who called on that boy and said that he had a gun just last week? Who was that? The Mexican. As much torture as they have been through, you would think they would have some kind of remorse about what we go through. They don't like us either. You guys don't have no safe haven. No safe. When you're in school, you're at risk of your teachers misusing you, abusing you, like Brother Kiva said. When you're out on the street, it certainly ain't safe. In some spiritual places, our boys and girls are being molested. Where are we safe? That's why we're having this. We ain't safe nowhere. That's why we need to come together. We got a lot of skill in here, and it's going to take us to do this to be safe. A slave. Generally, the definition of a slave is one who is the property of another. Listen to the next line. Having no freedom in their actions or deeds or for the purpose and benefit of the master. We understand that. But look at this one. One of the main goals of the master in relation to the slave is to convince the slave to be a willing accomplice or helper in his or her own destruction. Who ran that boy over in Decatur, Georgia? The one just showed you. The off-duty off officers. Who were they that I told you? Who killed that boy in Baltimore where our sister is from where he was mentally ill and the cop shot him and the people was begging. Y'all probably ain't hear about that at the Lexington Market, gunned him down. You can see it in Baltimore and Philadelphia all the time, blacks being gunned down by other cops who are black. No one likes black people, and we are not safe anywhere. Y'all mad at me? No, no. no. Now here's the psychology of why the world thinks of you the way you do. Once we got to the plantation, they actually had medical doctors to convince the slave masters and you that you were mentally ill, inherently criminal, and just off the wall, and it was good business for them to enslave you. This is a medical doctor. He's one of the worst ones who started this. Morton published a book that you can still get, Crania Americana, written to demonstrate the whites had larger skulls than blacks, which meant blacks were less intelligent, hypersexual, and had an inferior character than whites. You can still get this book. Next slide. And here's one of his students, one of the worst ones, that movie that I showed y'all a couple months back, where they were had the sex farms, y'all remember that? And y'all were sitting there. He was one of the doctors in the movie. I just ain't had time to show you. Dr. Samuel Cartwright, look what he said. Another book you can still get. 
in diseases and physical peculiarities of the Negro race, he said, from the Bible, references to prove that blacks were inferior, he even said it was impossible for blacks to survive without white supervision. In, 18, in 1851, he had diagnosed an imaginary black disease called dreptomania, which he claims blacks were lazy and shiftless in the Negro race. He also claimed the illness called Negroes the one to run from their master and break their master's property. So he didn't mention that he brought us here from Africa against our will and put us on plantations and beat the hell out of us. He said we had a mental illness called dreptomania that make us break their property. And he said the best way to cure this illness was to beat the devil out of them. Yeah, we're seeing that in 2012. One of his buddies, Dr. Joshua Knott, I could be here two hours just telling you about these doctors. Types of Mankind, another book they haven't taken off the market. He said blacks had mental and physical um, differences than whites that made us inferior. One of the physical differences, get this, blacks had knee joints and long heels that approved that blacks were hypersexual and created to be submissive knee benders to whites. Meaning our knees and our knee joints were somehow different and we were created to literally bow down to white people. This book was actually copied in 1942, The Biology of the Negro, then reproduced in 75. A lot of us was born then. Considered a masterpiece by Dr. Richard Allen Williams entitled Black Related Diseases. I know a lot of y'all are in love with uh, North Carolina UNC. It's a, a doctor there by the name of Howard Odom that said black women are the reason for inherently criminal future black boys. <laughs> Went to UNC. Howard Odom, look him up. Next slide. They've never been a friend of you. Now we're talking about the police department. Next slide. Why do we have such a volatile relationship with the police department? This is why. The first police department in America was formed in Boston in 1938. Many members of the force were former slave catchers, were plantation owners. So when your ancestors was brought here against their will, and, we, and when they tried to run and escape, they used to hire slave masters, I mean slave catchers, to catch them and bring them out. Out of that became your first police department. If you don't believe me, in Boston, I always bring you the proof. Here's the book, Hidden History of Massachusetts. Gruesome talks about how all the elementary schools there, almost all the elementary schools there are named after slave masters. The University of Winthrop, who went far in the NCAA tournament, named after someone who used to slaughter Indians or Native Americans. Also talks about Roger Williams, who is the first man to open a Baptist church in America. He entered, entered into the child sex trade in Boston. I'm going to repeat that. Roger Williams, the first man to open a Baptist church in Rhode Island, was in with this police department and entered into the South child sex trade. It's all in this book. It also talks about the origin of Thanksgiving. Not my stuff. Y'all mad at me? No. I'm almost done. We already talk, talked about that. Statue of Liberty, we talked about this. This is the lynching by the police department of Laura Nelson in 1915 in Oklahoma. 200 white men brought her and her son there to this bridge, a bridge that they are glorified now. They raided her house because they said she stole something when she didn't, brought her to this big bridge, and about 50 white men raped her in front of her child and lynched him and her. Her name is Laura Nelson in 1915. It's in this book, written by a white man. And the police department did it. Y'all mad at me? Or you mad at the white boy? Slide. Now, here's, a, here's another recent book. We talked about this on Friday. A book that another doctor wrote, A Negro, A Menace to American Civilization, written by this doctor. He talks about, now this is related to, um, no, this is related to, uh, what's the demon that just killed our brother? Zimmerman. In this book, he talks about if you don't uh, secure your neighborhoods, let me pick up somewhere here. Uh, these heinous, devilish, fiendish cases of rape are often associated with the murder victim after assault. They have become so common in many parts of the country where Negroes abound. Their fearful species and terror has become 
to prevail and haunt the minds of white women who for one reason or another reside within the same reason. Indeed, matters have come to such a pass in these respects that no white woman, no white girl, in fact, no white child in, can be safe at all and venture out alone in these districts and places where Negroes have the full sway. It talks a whole book. It talks about the future menace to American society or black boys. And if we don't justify or make lynching legal, they will take over the neighborhood. I'm giving you a mindset of why we are being slaughtered in the street because a lot of them have that mindset. Next slide. There's a movie that makes the uh, uh, KKK heroes. Just came out in 1915 called Birth of a Nation. And it said the KKK are good people and needed to keep you under control. This, if you go to the AFI, which is the American Institute, American Film Institute, it still ranks as one of the top 100 films of all time. And it says, the KKK was needed to keep you under control. I'm going to keep it moving. America programmed in our minds that we're criminal. Menace to society, in our gangs. But I can give you a whole other lecture, which I did, that the first gangs in America were Europeans. But if you think about gangs in your mind, that's the first thing that comes to your mind, probably. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Next slide. 29 black people have been killed in January since our brother. At least 16 or 20. There's the website if you don't believe me. We have people tracking this. Next slide. Now, this is the interactive part. We have brothers here, and he did an excellent job. Brother Edward, uh, Brother Anthony, and we have another brother here, uh, Brother Shakur, who is highly trained in self-defense. Because we got people rolling up on us. Now, we ain't telling you to buck up against the cops, but it's a certain mindset that you need to have if the cops roll up on you to save your life. And then if someone it says they're a cop rolling up on you, it's fair game. But we want you to be trained. I need it. We all need it. I want my boys um, to have it. So they already have a certain mindset about you, meaning black boys. So if you're out with your boys, right, and you get pulled over by the police, you just ride and they say you run a stoplight. You may or may not have. And as he's walking to that car, I already showed you their mindset. I could be here four more hours showing them what they think of you. But if you got this attitude, it could cost you your life. You roll up on you. Can I see your, your license and registration? Man, what, what, what? Oh, just what I thought. Just what I thought. All those books I showed you and the thinking, just what I thought. Get out of the car. It's over. It could be over for you. So. I don't know how you want to handle this part. We want to give you some information and some role play if our brothers to come down. Brother Shakur, he's trained in martial arts. Brother Eddie, we got Brother Anthony. And this isn't my area. We work together to help save your life. This isn't no joke. This isn't no joke. It could be me, it could be you, and you only got a little bit of time to save your life. You ain't going to get this kind of teaching nowhere else. They're not teaching you in school how to save your life. Nowhere. They only know how to deal with crisis when you're in the ground. And we don't want your mothers seeing you in the ground. But it's things you can do to prevent that. And you ain't going to get this anywhere else. If it's anyone else teaching this anywhere, let me know the address so I can go there. I bet you it is. All right. Hey, can we give it up for Brother Shirley? Take a deep breath for a second because I know that's a lot, right? I know it's a lot. All right, so I want to hear some feedback from y'all out there right now. Um, how are y'all feeling about what y'all have seen so far? Like, what, what's what's going on in your minds out there? Hey, bro, how you doing? I'm Brother Darrell from Raleigh. I was at the meeting yesterday. Um, wanted to let the people know that you have police officers that are trained in these actions, and all of us fit the profile. No matter what you look, your pants are sagging. If you got the sag on, you got certain kind of shoes, certain color shirts, how you wear your hair. But realize, when these officers go through training, you have black officers that get the same amount of training as these white officers do. They get the same bullets, the same gun, same equipment, 
Why is it you don't see black officers beating and shooting and killing white suspects like you see black officers doing, uh, like you see white officers doing the black folk? You don't see black officers doing these actions. You don't. I don't care how much training you got, but you will never see a black officer take the will and take the life of a white suspect like these white officers do us. And I think that's a major problem. I think it's a God complex. I think a lot of these guys come out of the military and they have this Rambo type gun complex because most of the places they're deployed at are areas that have dark skin just like you. So when they come over here, they got post-traumatic stress disorder. They don't get properly trained because they figure the military trained them enough. And then before you know it, you're in their gun sights and realizing that if they even pull the trigger, a dead witness can't talk. Thank you, brother. All right, anybody else? What are you guys, what are you guys thinking about right now? What, what's going on in your heads? What, what are you feeling? And I want to hear from some of the young brothers, too. Um, what are you guys feeling when you see all this information presented to you like that? Oh, wow. uh, I'm going to have to speak from though, before I do. Unfortunately, and it's been eight years, but I can tell you, it's like yesterday. Same part of Florida, my son was shot and killed by Italy. Although he put himself in this situation to steal my baby. Situation is because of the 